Hey everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 Tutorial 52. Uh, I had forgot when we were loading the meshes that there was something that we actually didn't cover. So, in certain 3D file formats, there we know that there's like a parent-child hierarchy with the objects, but the parents uh, can have a matrix tied to them, and that matrix gets passed down uh, to each child in their transformations. So to demonstrate this, I have added a, another file. Let's see where we initialize the scene. We're going to, going to load in this new file. So it is called um, dodgechallenger.fbx. And when we run this, you'll see that it looks really weird. All right, and let's see, the model's a little bit big and it's still rotating. Um, real quick, I'm going to make it so the model doesn't rotate. So I want to comment out that adjust rotation. I'm going to make it so if we're holding down shift, the camera will move faster. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we loaded in this car, but that nothing is really where it should be. So now let's look at how to fix this. So first let's go to our model header. And when we process a node, we are going to want to pass in a the transform matrix of the parent node to this node so that we can use that uh, to transform our current node's matrix. And then when we process a mesh, we will want to pass in the transform matrix for that specific mesh. So let's go down to where we are processing the node. Let's add in that argument. And then for process mesh, let's add in just the transform matrix. So the first thing let's do is the very first time we process node, we're going to have to pass in a parent transform matrix, even though there isn't really one. So what we'll do is we'll just pass in the identity matrix since this will have no effect. Next, we need to get the transformation matrix for this specific node. So the way that we can do this is we can look at node and we can look at the uh, transformation member. And the thing about this is two things. First off, it's the data type AI matrix and we need it as an XM matrix. And then also it is in column major format and we need it in row major format. Now, if you remember from before in the tutorials, we can translate it, we can transpose it to get it from uh, column major to row major and vice versa. So what we will do here is we will, first we need to convert this to an XM matrix. So let's do that like this. We will cast the uh, very first field in this the address of it to an XM matrix. So essentially, you know, um, AI matrix is has 16 floats in it. XM matrix has 16 floats. So we can just cast the very first member inside of AI matrix, the address of that. And that will be able to convert it to an XM matrix because it's just taking an array of floats. However, this at this point, this will be in column major format. We need to get it in row major format. So we're going to call it transpose. All right, so now we have our nodes matrix um, set up how we need it, but we still have to apply the parents matrix to this uh, transformation matrix. So what we will do now is we will multiply by the parent transform matrix. And that should be all that we have to do for that. So now our nodes transform matrix is set up. When we push back a new mesh, we're going to pass in the nodes transform matrix. And when we go to process the next node, we're going to pass in this nodes transform matrix. Next, let's take a look at process mesh. So we know that we're getting in the transform matrix for each mesh now. All that we have to change is that when we create a new mesh, we need to pass in this mesh. 
So next, we have to update the mesh constructor. So we're going to do a few things here. First, uh, this constructor is really long, but we're going to add another argument for the, the for the transform matrix. And then we are also going to add a function to get the transform matrix. We'll just call that get transform matrix. And then we are going to add a member variable to store this mesh's transform matrix. Now let's first update the mesh constructor, which takes in this transform matrix. So we're going to add that argument and then we are just going to set the transform matrix equal to the transform matrix that gets passed in. When we are copying uh, using in the copy constructor, we'll have to do the same thing. And lastly, let's just make the definition for the get transform matrix function, which will just return uh, our transform matrix. Now, the last thing we will have to do is go into our model CPP and go to where we are drawing. So we'll pull up the draw function. And what we are going to do here is we are going to move the code in where we update the worldview projection matrix to run for every single mesh. And before we multiply by the world matrix, we are going to pass in that specific mesh's uh, transform matrix. So now when we try to run this, we should see the car with all the parts in the right places. Let's see. All right, and there we go. We've got our car and we've got our wheels and everything on it. And uh, as you can see, the car model is huge. So that's what's going on there. We, we're, it's, it's like the back of the car is so far away that it exceeds our Z buffer, which we could just go and increase in our graphic CPP. We could increase our Z buffer to like 3000 or something. And now we can see the whole car at once. And now that we have added in that code, uh, we should be able to load pretty much any uh, 3D model and have the parts be in their correct orientations. I'm going to go ahead and end this tutorial. In the next tutorial, before we get into the lighting and stuff, I just wanted to do a small amount of cleanup. Specifically, we have this game object and we have camera and they have a lot of similar functions. And I wanted to add a new class for renderable game object, which will be similar to our current game object and it'll inherit from game object and take out some of the functionality of game object that's specific for rendering. And that way our camera class can inherit from game object. And the whole purpose is just to reduce where we have these duplicate functions. And then after that, we will finally get into loading in normals and lighting.